Story using a checkpoint simulator today in NHL with a break in Plexus Burn injury. We use a checkpoint simulator for multiple reasons. In this particular case, we'll use the, the biphasic stimulator to initially identify the phrenic nerve and protect the phrenic nerve. Then we'll sequentially identify the root roots, C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. Using the stimulator, we're accurately able to access their continuity. If they're in continuity, then I'll, we'll obviously perform a neurolysis and move it out of the way, and we obtain that information from the stimulation. If they're ruptured, then there'll be no stimulated response, and we'll be able to react them. Another surgical option that we may need today is a nerve transfer. For example, we may end up doing an Oberlin transfer where we take a piece of the ulnar nerve and put it into the muscutaneous nerve or intercostals to muscutaneous nerve. In those instances, we use a checkpoint stimulator to identify the specific donor and recipient sites that allows us to co-apt these nerves directly under the microscope. So for me, the, the stimulator has provided reliable information consistently, both to identify and protect normal structures like the phrenic nerve and both to identify and transfer viable motor axons into deficient motor axons. And lastly, the other benefit, this case will take six or eight hours and the stimulator will work the entire time. From a neuroprotective standpoint, we also use it because if the lower trunk is in continuity, we use it to move the lower trunk out of the way before we address the operating middle trunk. So the product's been good for us to use and it's helped us with patient care.